K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Good evening. Wow, I hope you're having a good day. I am your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to The Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal, and tonight we're going to talk a little bit about Obama's exit. Maybe not so fast. But before we do so, I want to remind you that, yes, there are a handful of ways to listen, so wherever you're at, set this channel as a favorite, whatever you've got to do to so you don't get left behind. If for some strange, crazy reason you do miss the show, it's not a problem. You'll be able to catch the replay. You know where to find it over on Spreaker. Tune in, whatever. Sit back. We've got you. There's no need to panic. In the case you aren't already following on social media, okay, find me over on Twitter's at Stafford Voice. Again, you can find me over on the Twitter's at Stafford Voice. Or you can find me over on Facebook if you need a little more than 120 to 140 characters to say what you've got to say. Find me over on the Facebook. All you got to do is just search for the Stafford Voice. Again, that's the Stafford Voice. It's really, really easy. Hell, it's the name of the show. Um, also, if you've got any questions, comments, or concerns, you can send them my way via email if you would like to stay a little more um, covert, I guess you could say. You can email them to me at the Stafford Voice at gmail.com, the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. And since you'll already be over on the interwebs anyway, be sure to send some love to the station and our affiliates. Make sure that you thank them for giving us the opportunity to reach out and talk to you every Monday and Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern. Without them and without your guys' support, we wouldn't be able to do this. Also, you can stay up to date with uh, a handful of the topics that we discuss here on the show over at thestaffordvoice.com. Since you're already there, do me a favor. At the top of the screen, uh, do a short survey for me. Uh, As you're listening to the show, uh, you don't have to take notes. But after after the show is over, if this is your first time listening, do me a favor. Head on over to, to the staffordvoice.com, the top of the page. There is Uncle Sam. Click on Uncle Sam, and it'll take you literally less than five minutes to answer five super short questions. So let's dive into this, right? Obama's exit strategy, or not so fast. Because... And, Really, I, you guys know I'm a, I'm a quote guy. I, I love quotes, um, especially if they're from excellent sources that you can go to more often than once or twice a year and gain a lot of insight. And this one, I, I stumbled across this one from, I think I saw it on Alan West's Facebook, uh, where he posted a quote. Um, pointing to Cicero, where Cicero once said, quote, A nation can survive its fools, and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable, for he is known and carries his banner openly. But the traitor moves amongst those within the gate freely, his sly whispers rustling through all the alleys, heard in the very halls of government itself. For the traitor appears not a traitor. He speaks in accents similar to his victims, and he wears their face and their arguments. He appeals to the baseness 
that lies deep in the hearts of all men. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly and unknown in the night to undermine the pillars of the city. He infects the body politic so that it can no longer resist. That pretty much shapes up what we're going to hit on tonight. Because as you know, coming up on Tuesday night, Tuesday night is Obama's last State of the Union. Woohoo! Yes! Finally! We've reached... Oh, man. I, I'm, there is a light at the tunnel, ladies and gentlemen. And for Obama... He, let me give you a prediction here, short, real short, real quick. He's going to use this as a quote-unquote victory tour. He's going to likely list out all of his accomplishments, and he, he's... I would rather listen to a toddler have a farting competition than listen to the crap that will come out of this yahoo's... Um, Whole, okay. He's going to list what he thinks are all of his accomplishments, and he is going to display them in the open. I mean, you're going to hear and see divisive politics like you've never seen before. Um, it it's going to be ridiculous, to say the least. It, it's. It's even an in-your-face moment because we learned over the weekend, or it was either Friday or, or over the weekend, that Obama is likely going to have an empty seat or two uh, if, you, if you count the empty seat from Cruz because I think he said he won't be there. He, um, there's going to be an empty seat to, uh, as Obama put it, to display those who we've lost due to gun violence. So yeah, he's got that going for him. Whereas I think Ted Cruz over the weekend in response to that it, Ted Cruz's response was that if he's elected president, he's going to have an empty seat at his State of the Union addresses in honor of those that couldn't be there because of the aborted uh, children that due to Planned Parenthood. Um, so he threw the curveball right back at him. But also, it's likely that Michelle Michelle Obama is going to have a special guest of her own and it looks like all signs are pointing to a Syrian refugee now if we if we look at this the way the government typically does things this refugee is not vetted they're you never know. They're probably going to wind up, at some point, will wind up knowing that they are related to the Sarnayev brothers or the the thing that we saw over in San Bernardino. Who knows? But this divisive politics and, and his victory tour of sorts, um, the Washington Post reported that... He is promising a speech that, in his words, cuts through the, quote, day-to-day -day noise of Washington and celebrates America's capacity, quote-unquote, to come together as one American family. Instead of a to-do list of policy proposals that have little chance of passing Congress, he has said he plans to deliver a speech that will describe, quote, who we are as a nation, or perhaps more accurately, who Obama in the last year of his presidency would like us to be. So, 
if you take out all of the clapping, all of the cheering, all of the hooting and hollering, and all of the, uh, le- uh, let me be clear, I got something to say, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it again, and uh, then I'm going to rub some icy hot under the eyes, and I'm going to cry, John Boehner's not sitting behind me, John Bonehead Boehner, give it up for John Bonehead Boehner. Somebody's got to cry at these things. It's going to be me. You take out all of that, it's going to be a victory tour. It's going to be a joke. But there may be a little more to this, to this whole madness, and we need to give it a little more credit that maybe Obama's got bigger plans. Now, I realize this may come as some shock to you or maybe a tinfoil hat moment. I don't know. If you've got your tinfoil hats, you probably want to go grab them. And as a matter of fact, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to go through Campaign Roundup. It is... Less than two minutes of some of the top Republican nominees who are out there trying to vie for the president. We've summed it up in in less than two minutes of what they've said over the weekend. So here's what I want you to do. As, as you're listening to this in the background, I want you to go get your tinfoil hats because what we're about to talk about, you're either going to call me crazy... Or you're really going to think to yourself, seriously? No flipping way. All right, we'll be right back. Well, I'll tell you what, I I have formed a great bond in Iowa. I'm doing very well with the evangelicals. I'm Protestant. I'm Presbyterian. I have a great bond with the evangelicals. And by the way, with the Tea Parties. No, let me tell you, she's not a victim. She was an able, she worked, yeah, she worked with him. I mean, she was, some of the women have been totally destroyed. Some of these women have been destroyed. And Hillary worked with him. I mean, there's no, there's no feeling sorry for Hillary in this situation. Well, his proposal for everything is to, is to infringe on the Second Amendment. There's a terrorist attack in San Bernardino before even the facts are known. He immediately jumps and says, we need gun control. But take this away our guns? resorts to. Well, if he could, he would. Obviously, he knows he's constrained by the Second Amendment, so what he tries to do is chip away at it every chance he gets. Dictatorship's not leadership, and he's acting like a dictator and a petulant child. Let's remember something. What I mean by that statement is, in 2008, he came in with it all. Huge majority in the House, filibuster-proof majority in the in the Senate, and he, the Republicans only had 21 governors around the country. Since that time we're up to 31 Republican governors, big majority in the House, majority in the Senate. His policies have been rejected by the American people, but he doesn't want to hear that. Beginning of this campaign, whenever anyone has thrown rocks, has thrown insults, uh, I have not engaged, I have not reciprocated. And I don't intend to. And that's the way I've treated Donald. It's the way I've treated every other candidate. And it's the way I intend to approach it. And and the reason, Jake, I, I think most Americans... They couldn't care less about a bunch of politicians bickering like school children. The substance of the issue I, is clear and straightforward. As a legal matter, the Constitution and federal law are clear that the child of a U.S. citizen born abroad is a natural-born citizen. All right. As I was saying, tinfoil hat moment or not... Would you put this past him? Obama may or may not want to be United Nations Secretary General. You're going to call me crazy and and that this is some conspiracy theory, but how about a post that was dug up from 2014 over at Investors Business Daily that says, this is straight from their article, it is commonly observed that President Obama never started governing because he never stopped campaigning. He campaigned in his West Point speech, all right, 
for United Nations Secretary General. We've got a president who has unblushingly told us he's, quote, a better speechwriter than my speechwriters, unquote, knows, quote, more about policies on any particular issue than my policy directors, unquote, and is, quote, a better political director than my political director. Not to mention that, quote, like any politician at this level, I've got a healthy ego, unquote. Uh, no kidding. An intellect that enormous must feel confined by merely leading the free world, or more accurately, not leading, such boundless cerebral power prowess deserves a real challenge, such as running the whole world. Huh? How did we miss this back then? Did we not give credit where credit was due on this? Well, maybe something a little more is coming to light, because as... and. and I got to get better at telling, at reminding everybody that, you know, if you're listening out there and you want to join the chat room with our, um, some of our friends in the chat room right now are, um, Charlie, we've got Slickery Trig, um, Tina's in there, I see her sitting there, join us over, you've got two different ways to get to the same chat room, you can go to k98talk.com slash chat dash room, or you can go to the Stafford Voice uh, dot com slash listen live. Two different ways to get to the same chat room. Like minded individuals just like you absolutely love freedom, love liberty, love America. Okay. Yes, Charlie post Charlie touched on something important. One world order. Hear me out here, okay? Recently, over the weekend, this story popped back up. The idea that Obama... Rick, I see you there, too. Sorry, buddy. Um, I hope you're having a good night tonight. You guys need to make sure you stay tuned after after we're done because um, Rowdy Rick Robinson is going to be taking the airwaves, and you're not going to miss what he's got coming up tonight. Um, so Washington Times reports now this is this was from over the weekend so this is current not from 2014 as we know um, Barack Obama's there's no no way in hell he's going to continue to serve as president after 2016 no way now if this egomaniac tries to do this there's one guy out there, Netanyahu, who's leading the effort to thwart this. Okay, Washington Times was reporting um, that, that uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu said. Now, this is from a paper over in from from Kuwaiti Daily, and he's they're they're quoting BB as saying, "quote." Wasn't eight years of having Obama in office enough? Eight years during which he ignored Israel, and now he wants to be in a position that is liable to cause us hardships in the international air arena? Now, an aide to Netanyahu said, Obama is the worst president Israel has had to deal with, and the worst president for the Middle East and its allies, the moderate Arab states. And we touched on this last week on Thursday's show where we talked about um, when you go in and you remove uh, when you remove somebody from power like uh, Gaddafi you're going to have even more unrest we're still trying to connect the dots so you're going to have to stick with me on this one trust me on I'm digging we're digging into it about the 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 whole Gaddafi um, phone transcript with him and Tony Blair that kind of shined a light onto something, and we're we're going to talk a little bit more about it not tonight, but in the future. Now, 
another source close to um, Netanyahu said that his presidency was characterized by Washington's move by Washington moving closer to the Muslim Brotherhood, toppling the regime of Hosni Mubarak, and attempts to um, ally itself with political Islam. Obama's term is ending with him forging an alliance with Iran, coming to an agreement with it on its nuclear program, which, in the end, will result in a similar scenario that took place in North Korea. Israel will not allow this to happen. It will take all of the necessary steps to prevent Iran from manufacturing a nuclear weapon, either covertly or overtly. Okay, it's important to know, how would he be able to do this? The current UN Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon, it will, guess what? Timing is just so perfect with this. Ladies and gentlemen, his term expires at the start of 2017. Now, granted, there, there's a little bit of a hole in this entire idea. And because this idea came back to light over the weekend where an Arabic language Kuwaiti magazine, Al Jarida, published an article making the claim uh, that Obama was was uh, working to be to take um, Moon's spot as UN Secretary General, but there there's this publication has had some problems in the past with trying to validate some of their um, some of their stories and claims. So, in all actuality, could this happen? Well. A, According to in-depth news, I think it's indepthnews.com. I'm sorry, I don't have I don't have the exact website. But you you can just Google, hit the Googles and and type in um, in-depth news. Now, according to in-depth news on Saturday, there are a few there are few rules that govern the selection of the Secretary General. And really, the only guiding language is article is found in Article 97 of of the UN chapter or charter. I'm sorry, which states that the Secretary General shall be appointed by the General Assembly upon the recommendation of the Security Council. Obama has chaired the Security Council twice. In 2009, he presided over a meeting of the uh, Security Council and in September of 2014 he again presided over a meeting over over a, a Security Council meeting. Traditionally candidates from the P5 or as they put it permanent members China, France, Russia, United Kingdom and the United States are not considered for the position of secretary general because it gives a it it, it gives a con there, it creates a concentration of power within the united nations one united nations insider is being quoted as saying as with regional rotation this is a matter of precedent and convention rather than a written rule. So, how creepy is it knowing that there is probably a loophole that Obama, after being president for eight years, of all of the ruin and destruction that he's helped facilitate in the Middle East, of all of the problems that he's helped create here in the United States, can you imagine what he would do as the emperor 
at the United Nations. Call me crazy, but that is pretty damn scary, knowing that he would have that much authority, that much um, reach to be able to go to another country and say, look, uh, let, let me be clear. You got to do it this way. If you do it that way, you're not going to be a, you're, you're not going to get the blessings of the United Nations. And um, I'm the United Nations Secretary uh, General. Uh, I worked hard to get here. I ruined America, but I'm going to fix it. We got a one world government, and with your help, we can do it. Can you imagine? what end he could cause. Just food for thought, call it what you want. It could be a conspiracy theory, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it. Call it a tinfoil hat for the evening. Give it some thought. And, um, you know, uh, hit me up on the Twitters or the Facebook with some of your thoughts. I'd, I would love to know what you guys think of... of of the idea that Obama could be could be vying f for the position of United Nations uh, Secretary General. Reach out to me and let me know what you guys think. It, it's that kind of stuff just scares the crap out of me. I mean, the last thing I want is for him to have any position of power after he leaves man it's this these last eight years has been the these last seven years right now almost eight have been horrific I mean, he he had the opportunity to really do some good things but he didn't he played into his sick and twisted agenda and it has gotten us nowhere but infighting. I mean, you can't even you can't even make a joke anymore without worrying you're going to offend somebody because everybody has to be so damn politically correct. Anyway, speaking of being politically correct, my friends over at RWNJ Funding are not politically correct they don't play that game now I know what you're thinking this is just another silly sales pitch for uh, RWNJ funding or some product that this guy wants to talk about let me tell you this I believe in these guys just as much as they believe in you They've, they have put together the easiest to use crowdfunding site. It is by far easier than any of the other ones out there. You've got to take a look at them. And to be quite honest, when we were trying to figure out how to do our pledge drive for 2016 to help fund the show for the year, because I've told you guys this before. This is listener-funded and listener-supported, and this is how you guys help. You guys have made contributions in the past to, for our pledge drive, and you've you've been able to do it yourself. And we only do a short, limited time. And there's only a few more than 20 days. I think there's 22 days left of our pledge drive. When I needed to figure out a way to, to do this, I thought, wait a minute, RWNJ funding, these guys have got my back. Let, let's, let's go do this. Let's do this. Let's team up with RWNJ funding and let's, let me show everybody else how awesome it is. And I'm telling you, it's incredible. It's easy to use. Their interface is so easy to use. If you've got an idea that you need to do and you need a little you need crowdfunding help with, head over to RWNJ funding. 
I'm over there. Check out our pledge drive over at rwnjfunding.com. Again, that's rwnjfunding.com. And since you're over there, take a look at our pledge drive. And if you're willing to help, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what happened on this day in history. And then we're going to play into the uh, the whole who said that thing that we like to close out with. We'll be right back. Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to three million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. I'm not the type of guy that jumps into anything without first doing my research. And when I was looking for a holster, I'll admit I was having one heck of a time. You know what I'm talking about here. You find one you like, you try it on, it would be clunky. Another one fits good, but costs way too much. So you try on one last holster, it was slim, lightweight, priced right, but lo and behold, you slide your pistol in and it falls right out. So what do you do? You've tried all these mass market holsters. Well, go custom. I know what you're thinking. I thought it too. Too pricey. Wrong. My guy over at Rebel Road Tactical will not only put together the perfect fitting, hand molded, hand assembled, custom Kydex holster, but you'll get it at an affordable price. Don't wait. Contact Rebel Road Tactical today at 682-217-4579. Again, that's 682-217-4579. Four five seven nine. It's happening. Place no one can stop it. It's the dramatic reinvention of Top Top Radio. Here come the spa dolphins. The only thing that can cure racism is Robert E. Lee's penis. Who named this cat Limberfoot McCubbin? A Trump Biden debate. Plugs versus rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Real serious nonsense. The show's so bad, you'll laugh at us. The worst podcast. We obviously hold that title. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, K98 Talk. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. Okay. We are back. I'm your host, Daniel Stafford, and yes, you are listening to The Stafford Voice. Okay, now I almost forgot about this. I'm lucky that I I stumbled across this because, as you guys know, one of the the things that's near and dear to my heart is our veterans. Our veterans need help, and when they need help, when when they finally get the courage, because a lot of these guys and gals need to go get help when they finally decide it, they've they've worked really hard to build the courage up to go ask for help. Well, we've covered this a couple of times about the whole um, veteran affairs, um, how crappy they've treated our veterans how a disservice they are here's a little bit of an update the two of these VA officials um, have been where did they've been demoted these two veteran affairs officials have been demoted because they um because of their lack of action um there's apparently they're not completely fired just demoted luckily something was done what really sucks they weren't fired so far, there hasn't been any criminal charges filed against them for what they've done, but at least something was done. 
it's I hope that in the end this story is not over I really hope that there's more to this that that an that a full criminal investigation goes into this and that something happens about that whole situation we've got to fix our we've got to fix the VA the, the that whole thing really makes me sick to the stomach it really does i i hate knowing that our veterans out there have not had good as good of coverage as they've deserved I mean, these guys put their lives on the line day in and day out and they deserve so much better so i just thought that i'd update you on the two executives that were demoted um that was a, a little shining glimpse into hopefully more of what we hope to see with with that whole situation okay so on this day in history back in 1775 is when today's um on this day in history comes from this guy's name his name was francis salvador his grand uh, whose grandfather was influential in moving a group of 42 jewish colonists to georgia in 1733 well later his family purchased some land in south carolina unfortunately an earthquake in 1755 destroyed their portuguese property and the east india company collapsed which drained the family's resources their property in south carolina was all they had left in 1773 francis salvador left his wife and children in london to establish himself and make and and get things set up here in america so he'd be able to bring over his family well in within a year of his arrival he won a seat in the south carolina general assembly and in 1774 south carolinians elected salvador to the uh to the revolutionary provincial congress um which in january 1775 they began to meet and it was there that salvador spoke um really highly and forcefully for the cause of independence well it was on this day in history january 11th 1775 francis salvador became the first jew to hold an elected office in the americas and he takes his seat on the south carolina provincial congress now a little uh, here's a little more about salvador and it was that on july 1st he earned the nickname southern paul revere this is a really cool story i mean any this is and this is actually the thing that that caught my eye the southern paul revere where he rode 30 miles to warn of a cherokee attack on um back on some of the backcountry settlements well exactly one month later while leading a militia group under the general command of a guy named major general james wilkinson salvador and his men were ambushed by a group of cherokees and loyalists near what we know today as seneca south carolina well salvador was shot and scalped by the cherokees although he survived long enough to know that the militia had won the engagement he never learned that the south carolina delegation to the continental congress in philadelphia had taken his advice and voted for independence from britain uh, salvador was the was also the first recorded jewish soldier killed in the american war for independence he died at the age of 29 never having managed to um, be able to bring his wife and children from london to the new country that he so valiantly and bravely fought for 
I thought it was fascinating. Um, again, it was the the whole idea that there's this guy named nicknamed Southern Paul Revere. That's that's what caught my eye on this. It's it's really fascinating. I mean, we these are these are the stories that we need to be telling people. These guys like Francis Salvador gave up everything to come to America to try and establish themselves and and try and establish something better for themselves. They lost everything over there. All they had was a tiny chunk of land. Fought and died for yours and mine independence. These guys and gals are the ones that we need to be talking about. Not these Syrian refugees that continue to want to come over here and kill us and take over. Okay. On this day... No, we already cut... I gotta gather my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm scatterbrained lately. I don't know why. I've... I feel I feel better over the last week and a half than I've felt in a really long time. And as a matter of fact, today was the first headache that I've had in probably a week and a half to two weeks. That really gives me hope. I'm I'm trying something new, but I wanted to update you guys on that. I, I know that it's kind of hindered our ability to do some shows at a couple of times, but. Hopefully what, what what I'm doing is is able to clear out some of the some of the cobwebs in the brain up there upstairs be able to think a little more clearly um yeah, cuz lately I feel so scatterbrained it it really does bother me um anyway who said that is it is it time <laughs> Well, I, I guess judging by that sound, it, it is time. <laughs> that it is time for who said that. If you're new to the show and you need to know, you want to know what who said that is. Who said that is a segment of the show. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, a Democrat, a liberal, conservative, libertarian, Whatever. If you say something really stupid, we're calling you out on it, and we're going to make fun of you. And tonight, we've got a special treat. So let's, let's, let's jump into this, shall we? My friend came to the door. She said, well, I was on the phone cooking me and my baby some breakfast. And she said, hey, something wrong is popping. I said, what? She said, yeah. I said, no. Nah. So the girl come downstairs. She come out of her apartment with her baby with no shoes on. I said, oh, girl, it's cold outside. She said, something ain't right. I said, oh, man. She said, oh, man, the building is on fire. I said, no, what? I got my three kids and we bounced out. Uh-uh, we ain't going to be in no fire. Not today. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was... that. <laughs> Oh, I needed a good laugh. That's not today's who said that. This one, this one, ladies and gentlemen, is tonight's who said that. On the Republican side, you're saying, yes, you saw this Clinton Sanders back and yeah. forth. But on the Republican side, among David Brooks, among the so called establishment Republicans, they're taking more pot shots at one another. You're hearing a lot of back and forth between Rubio and Cruz, between right. Cru Rubio and Christie and so forth. What's going on over there? Or is anybody making any headway among that, that group? Yeah, Ted Cruz is making headway. There's, there's, there, you begin to see little signs of liftoff. Uh, Trump's sort of sealing out, Carson's collapsing, and Cruz is somehow beginning to get some momentum in Iowa and elsewhere. And so people are either mimicking him, which Rubio's doing a little, by adopting some of the dark and satanic tones that, uh, that Cruz has. Uh, and so... What did uh, you... Let me just add. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you go to a Cruz... If you watch a Cruz speech, 
It's like, we've got this enemy, we've got that enemy, we're going to stomp on this person, we're going to crush that person, we're going to destroy that person. It is an ugly world in Ted Cruz's world. Uh, and it's combative, and it's angry, and it's, and it's apocalyptic. Well, if actually, if you go to a speech from his dad, it, who's a pastor, evangelical, Raphael Cruz, it actually is satanic. He, I watched a speech in which he said Satan was behind the Supreme Court decision to legalize gay, gay marriage. Say what? Okay, seriously. Obviously, the main point to that was David Brooks. This was um, from an interview... Uh, him and David Korn, I think, was the other guy that you heard there at the end. Uh, look, David Korn, we know that Ted Cruz's father, Rafael Cruz, that he's a pastor, an evangelical. We know this, okay? But the point that I was trying to make is David Brooks. Referring to Ted Cruz as as satanic. It's like I'm I'm at a loss for words. The guy is a complete moron. This, he's pointing out the obvious that we've got problems here in the United States that we need to take care of. And we also have foreign issues that we need to take care of. It's a little more important than trying to codify Ted Cruz's speech patterns as being satanic. I, the only thing that I've got to say about that is... Yes. Don't. Oh. Seriously, there is something wrong with these people. And even more than that, there's something wrong with the people that continue to put a microphone in front of these idiots and give them a pedestal to stand on. I would love to be able to get there to to get on and, and discuss things like this with these idiots and prove how dumb these guys really are. It's mind-boggling to try and... It, it wouldn't matter, it, even if they were talking about Rubio. They, these guys didn't... How come they didn't talk about Rubio being satanic in his talkings about his... in his recent talkings over the weekend about his, his faith... Nobody brings that up as being satanic. Nobody's out there. These two yahoos weren't out there talking about uh, Donald Trump. They weren't out there talking about Jeb exclamation mark Bush. They weren't out there talking about Carly Fiorina. Why is it that so many people are out, ready to pounce on Ted Cruz now. Oh, that's right. Because he's the biggest threat. Donald Trump is not a threat to Washington. Despite what everybody else is going to tell you, Donald Trump is not a threat to Washington. Donald Trump is only out there is only doing so well in the polls. And speaking of polls, Hillary Clinton finally found a job for Bill Clinton. She's trying to keep him out of the limelight. The last thing she wants Donald Trump to do, and I'm saying this in all honesty, the last thing Hillary Clinton wants to do is bring Bill Clinton out of the shadows so that Donald Trump or Ted Cruz or anybody else for that matter makes it an issue. So she has put him in charge of the polls. Yes, that's right. Listen, Monica, or I'm so, I get the two mixed up. Anyway, 
Hillary's put me in charge of the polls, and <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen this many nice shiny polls since I was in the strip club once. <laughs> and, uh, oh, wrong polls. Anyway, uh, I'll probably get in trouble for that one. <laughs> Listen. The last thing that Hillary wants to do is is let Billy Boy, good old B.J. Clinton, be talked about. It's only going to hurt her and her chances of finally, finally. I mean, she's got this thing handed to her, right? Wrong. Anyway, totally forgot where we were talking about earlier. Uh, we were talking about Donald Trump. Oh, Ted Cruz. Why is it that so many people feel threatened by Ted Cruz? The establishment doesn't like him. The media doesn't like him. So, everybody is ready to pounce on him like nobody's business. He's more than likely, I'm saying 75% chance of winning in Iowa which is going to give him a boost in New Hampshire, and he's probably going to take New Hampshire. It's That's what I think is going to happen. Anyway, it, the whole Cruz birther movement is stupid and ridiculous anyway. There's enough scholars out there, constitutional scholars, unquote, that are saying... He is 100% eligible. There are plenty of attorneys out there that are saying he's eligible. If do I mean seriously, do we really want to send this to the Supreme Court? It would be a waste of time for them to come down and finally send out a send it and say send out their ruling and say yes. He is. I know, is that the smoking gun that's going to keep Obama in office? No, it's not. As you heard earlier, he's trying to he wants to be emperor at the uh, United Nations. Anyway, look. That's all the time we've got for tonight. Uh this Monday night. You need to stay tuned. Um coming up this week, uh we've got the State of the Union address if trust me. You're not going to want to watch it. Find something else. Go watch a movie. Go on a date night. You and your wife or you you and your spouse. You and your spouse put together a date night. Unless you're just sick and twisted. And you want to watch it. It's going to be ridiculous. It's a stump speech for the United Nations maybe. Anyway, so we've got State of the Union coming up Tuesday night. Thursday night there's a big Republican debate. So big that they finally decided that they're not going to allow Rand Paul on the main stage, which is really good. Finally, hopefully we can get some good discussion, back and forth debate. Hopefully the trumpet gets hit on policy and exposed for the nincompoop that he really is. Anyway, that's all the time we've got for tonight, this Monday night. Uh, stick around coming up this week on Thursday we're probably we're going to discuss um, we'll probably do the round table join in on the round table fun um, about the talking about the debate going to be a going to be a hoot um, god willing the stafford voice will be back you can follow me over on the twitters at stafford voice look me up over on the facebooks as well all you got to do is just search for the stafford voice email any of your questions comments or concerns to the Stafford voice at gmail.com thank you so much for your time and until next time thanks and god bless <laughs>